The world around us is filled with important, unanswered questions. Math modeling provides qualitative and quantitative understanding of these problems and can even predict future behavior. There's no single formula for finding answers in the math modeling process. Once you get it, you've got a great framework for helping you and your students work towards a solution to your problem. This is how big a question that is fairly easy, at least for an adult to relate to, right? Especially people who all had to travel somewhere today or yesterday to go, to go somewhere and just think, my gosh, there's a lot that goes into that. So let's just go up here. And I think instead of, um, I'll ask people to, to share things out. But if I just go through some of the things that you did and we go through um, the modeling process sort of in a list here, did we define a problem statement? And probably what I should say by that is, did we change anything about the way the problem was originally given to you? We decided to specifically model a parent and child going on a college trip Thursday to Saturday and, um, and factor that into our cost. So we, we kind of focused the problem statement with the idea that later on we could modify that perhaps. Right. And so in doing that, what did you automatically do then, right? In, in defining the problem to be something that was more manageable, what happened? You made assumptions. You made an assumption, but it was something that made it tractable, right? You had to have something you felt like, I want to see something, and maybe this is of personal interest. I don't know, right, um, for someone in the room, or, or something that you could, you, know, you have students who are going to do that, right? So they're going to go with their parents somewhere. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. After you, you make some assumptions, what happened, what happened next to try to solve the problem? Did you just uh, jump right into it? What did you determine as, as variables? I think there's a lot of consistency in this. I'm just going to put it down that we had some assumptions. We know we had these two things. There were a lot of other assumptions that took place. But we certainly had, um, we thought that these, like the time and cost, had to be accounted for. And so I wonder here, right? if you're looking at just time and cost, there's probably a number, like you're, you're saying, there's a number of ways a lot of people were saying that they vary in terms of how we plug them into our model as we built our model. So I'll, I'll say a model exists because a lot of people had some sort of outcome which says, I basically have a total cost. When you combine them together, and that's I guess trying to represent somewhat with the circle, when you combine those together, now we've made something different that as we change that, we know we're going to have some different outcomes. So, it's interesting to think of that as a variable or maybe a parameter that you're inputting into your model and seeing different outcomes, right? So I might say variable slash parameter. How do you choose to use that? You are plugging it into that model and getting some outcomes. But that already le led you to a model because people got results, right? So we have a model. We got solutions. And a lot of them were dollar or time-based, right? and dollar time based. And I feel like some of the, the, the best ones I know, it's hard to get an answer in this amount of time. One of the difficulties students would have in a problem like this is they will look for some monster king function that combines, you know, that, that solves the problem because that's their experiences, those things exist. And so it's very hard for them. And one of the struggles they have is to do, you know, we're going to look at this particular kind of trip. Are we going to look at a family trip? Are we going to look at taking kids, a, a group of students on a trip? And one of the things that I, I talk with this group about is, is you're going to be trying to mush several disparate things together, uh, time and money, maybe coming up with a single value, it, or maybe you're going to have time and money as an ordered pair. Maybe the solution is going to be an ordered pair, a point in the plane, and then you get to look at the point in the plane to, and make some decision about it but trying to figure out what you can combine, what are similar enough to put together. Uh, and the, the expression I use with the students is, it's okay to make a fruit salad out of apples and oranges. You can combine apples and oranges, but you shouldn't try to combine apples and Buicks. You know, there, there are things, some things that are sufficiently different that everything changes. Uh, taking your debate team for a competition might be very different than taking your environmental club for a conference on green gases. You might make very different decisions about how this group should be getting there. And those, and those can't be rectified in a single solution.
Once you get to this point and you're able to combine these different things, make the comparisons. And that's what I'm saying. So people in the same room have done enough different things. If you compare those things, you should have different answers for the same question. And so what you're doing there is doing some analysis on your problem, right? Some sensitivity analysis, finding threshold values, right? Some threshold, there could be these, these points, right? In which like, oh my gosh, if we go with two people, it's good. If it's three people, that just costs too much for the plane. Or it could be that I'm waiting for that fare to drop. As soon as it, it's like just too, once it drops below $250, then it's worth it for me to fly to this place because my time is, even though you might not calculate it, my time is worth that much. Or maybe you do calculate it. So when I look at this, there's no doubt that you can all do modeling. Math modeling allows the kids to engage material in a contextual way, to see math in a context that they're familiar with. It was so easy the way he explained things that I can actually incorporate it in my regular regions classes. Now that we've reviewed the modeling process, your brain is likely full of new ideas for sharing modeling with your students. The problem we started with was big in that it allowed for great exploration and at least in the beginning required problem solvers to make some significant assumptions in order to find an initial solution. In the next video, my colleague Dan Teague will walk you through a modeling exercise you can use in your classroom on day one.